everybody. My name is David Gibbs. I live here in Somerville, and I'm going to read two poems by my father, Leonard Gibbs, who died about a year ago. The first is called A Wedding in the Hills. It was for us an unusually festive night, home for the springtime break, brothers and sisters rarely together, and my guest Susie, almost a fiancé, but that's another story. We were near dessert, probably an apple cobbler, when we heard a knock on the front door. I should explain, the manse was temporary, small. Living room and dining room were one. We lived in close community. So at the door, a couple, mature, he in plaid jeans and shirt, she in a dress, plain, nondescript and clean. I could smell the arrogant odor of lye soap, but no tie, no decorations, plain. My father asked them in. Henry and Mary, and what could we do for them? Preacher, we want to get married. Here's the license. The preacher said, well, you are invited to dessert, or if you'd rather, we can all put our chairs back and be your wedding party. Henry said he reckoned they'd just as soon get married right away. So Dad got the little black book, read the words, asked the questions, heard the yes, preacher Gibbs, pronounced them man and wife, and sent them on their way after a prayer. This did not seem strange to us, but Susie, city born and bred, looked puzzled, asked, Is this the way this is done here? It seems so offhand, so unromantic. I did not attend her wedding. I expect it was a large event in a large white-flowered church. Well, the pastor said, not unusual. However, Henry and Mary have lived together as man and wife for ten years now, have a family, quite respected. It's just that in those years, this is the first time they've had two extra dollars to buy a license. This next poem uh, is called To Climb Alone. It's risky, they will say, to climb alone. A sort of gospel word, a word drawn from the wisdom of the crowd. It's risky. You might fall and break your leg. There might be bears, there are, or turnings in the trail you might not recognize, and then you would be lost, as many are. All true, I say, and I'll be careful, walk on well-marked paths and not annoy the bears. I do not tell them, and I think they do not want to know. There are some aspects of these dark hills I will not share with anyone. Not just the broken shadow in the wall of leaves that was the passing of a deer, nor the quick hard click of juncos in the summit woods, nor the elegant view, hills and valleys painted on endlessness. With these I might say, or have said to me by one who walks in decent quietness, look, or wait, or this is lovely, right? Then we would have that moment and go on. Rather, in silence and alone, there is a shadowless light that blazes out for one and not for two. To see it, one must go into the woods on unexpected days, and one might see that light come unexpectedly. And there's a sound I call the mountain's breath, that even the heart's voice will mask. The listener must be alone, and very, very still. It will not sound for two. I'll share with anyone that sweet golden sight of spring's first lady slipper. That is the mountain's gift to crowds. And on those crowded days, I'll walk in crowded beauty and revel in both hill and human hearts. But on those other days, when hungry, my soul seeks that which will not come from flowers or from men, I climb alone. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed that.